Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, we liked the lighting from our last video. Yeah, so I, I, that, that's no, I might, we might keep the neon look, I kind of yeah. like this. This is a relaxing look, so yeah. let us know if you guys like it. And we were tagged, not once, but twice. So it's from our good buddy Sean Patrick Ersten over at the Horror mm -hmm. Corner. And it's his, uh, and it's actually not Sean who's doing the tag, it's his good buddy, the Dark Fates. And it is the ghostly horror tag. Ooh, spooky. And I guess Sean must have mentioned us to him, yeah. and I guess he's a fan. Yeah. So thank you so much, Dark Fate. We really love you and think you're pretty awesome too. You're almost as awesome as Sean. I, I think they might be friends. He, they kind of remind me of each other yeah. for some reason. You ever notice they're not in the same place at, at the same time? It's weird. Just like Batman. Just like Batman <laughs> and, and Clark Kent. Who? I just know Batman. <laughs> okay, so hit me, baby, one more time with the first question. What's the best? What's the best haunting movie? Ah, uh, for me that would be easy. It is the Changeling. Such a good fucking movie. Such a damn good movie. I I I, I love I've loved this movie since I was a little kid. If you have not, there's people out there that haven't seen it. If you if you're one of those people, stop this right now and go watch the Changeling because it is. A changeling good time. It's really good. I love the changeling. I it it would it would also probably be mine if it weren't for what I actually went with. Yeah, and speaking of which, what did you go with? The the most per, the most the perfect movie, considering it's named after the after the question, The Haunting. I know you're gonna fucking say it. <laughs> Depression and schizophrenia and made it about family. And lesbians! Oh, okay, guys. Um, no, the, the 30s one because I. It's such a great fucking movie, man. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Um, it, it's, it, it is a great fl uh, fl uh, flick. It's, it's one of the more. Uh, is, <laughs> just you just keep having scenes from the goddamn remake playing in your head, don't you? Actually, you're so wrong. I was thinking, you know, you're so wrong because if you're gonna go for an Orrin Wilson horror movie, you missed a good one with Anaconda. <laughs> That's the best Owen Wilson. This is completely off topic. I remember there was another one he did earlier, like a couple of years ago, where like a, literally a coup happens and, oh, yeah. and a government's trying to kill him. That wasn't family. a horror movie, that was just sad. <laughs> it was fucking amazing because they're all just trying to kill Owen Wilson. <laughs> Yeah. And his family. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> Sean's no, never tagging this again. The original Haunting is such a great flick. It really it, is. It's a great cerebral movie and one of the earliest like movies to really like. If you look at people like Lynch or a lot of, or even like um, Nolan, a lot of them draw a lot of inspirations from stuff like The Haunting because it's a very cerebral movie that gives a lot of heavy subtext. It's a story about like sexual repression and schizophrenia and mental illness. Yeah. In the in the 30s, and it just is such a it builds a and I love all. It the was almost things. ahead of its time. Oh, it was very ahead of its time. It, it, it's it's one of the it's one of the first movies to really introduce a coded gay character because mm -hmm. pre like um film code they had gay characters in movies all the time in like the 20s and stuff, and then once the code happened, you didn't get them until like the 90s again. Yeah. So you had a lot of coded stuff, and this movie kind of it really had that of giving hints of yeah, but it, I think it works really well because that's a big problem that I have with the remake is they take away all the subtlety of it and the creep factor of, yeah, you both, uh, t uh, the both of them are, you know, trying to, like, um, uh, trying to not, like, be killed by ghosts and shit, but they're also, but the, well, one of them also has a crush on the other. They bu it builds a lot of real great subtlety with the scenes that, uh, that they're in with each other, whereas the remake just has, you know, Catherine Cena jones I was just thinking that. What do you mean basic, not subtle? Basically just grinding her puss on the main character. Basically, like, Catherine Zeta jones was there for all the boyfriends that got drugged in this movie. Basically, you yeah. You know, it was just something, let's throw some lesbians for all 
all the for ironically the lesbians are for all the heterosexual males in yeah, the audience. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't like you know, and it wasn't one of the like nineties movies like Bounder. It's my party that knew how to do a gay character. Yeah. It was like most stereotypical goddamn lesbian character. Oh no, they made her bisexual, so it was okay for guys to hit on her. Basically, yeah, no, yeah. They, they, so they even copped out on that. Yeah, but no, I, if you can't tell, I have a lot to say about the original Haunting. I love it. It's a really good one. Corey, what did I write? Ghost story. Ghost oh, story. ghost story. For the second one, you mm. wrote uh, Devil's Backbone. Oh, what did you do? I did Candyman. Okay. Are you sure that's number yes, two? Yes, that's oh. number two. Okay. Okay, question two. What's your favorite ghost story? Not to be confused with movies about ghosts haunting houses. It's just a story about a ghost. I don't know why I'm Brock from Adventure, from Adventure Brothers now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what is my favorite ghost story? Yeah, that's the that favorite ghost story. Um, this one and the, this one, like, it took me a minute to think, oh yeah, this is technically a ghost story. And it is an urban ghost story, but be, uh, be very well assured, booze and ghouls, this is a ghost story. It is, and especially, you summon this ghost by saying his name. Five times into a mirror. Candyman. Candyman. It doesn't count because I'm not looking into a mirror. Candyman, Candyman, Candyman. <laughs> you know the funny thing is, is there's actually a mirror installed in the fucking camera. Little reflective. Does it count? It's a reflective surface. It counts. I've never done it five times in a mirror, and I'm like Baby thirty something. Smalls. Baby <laughs> smalls. But no, Candyman is like one of the perfect. And what I love about this is. Um, now, now to you young uh, youngins out there, I guess this wouldn't be considered modern day. But when I was growing up, it was very, it, they took an something old and really refreshed it and gave it a whole new thing and added it in a completely different contemporary setting. Oh yeah, and that is one of the geniuses of Candyman. Besides, you know, the brilliance of Tony Todd. Um, it, and it, it's a movie. Like I'm not kidding you. Like when I was a kid, I could I could say it four times into the mirror. Never could say it five times. Like it's not that I didn't want Tony Todd to come and see me, but I just. Didn't I want Candyman Tony Todd to come and see me. I just, I just didn't want to risk it. But bees. <laughs> it's a good now. Now the sequels, you know, but the first uh, one is. Over really the Flesh is okay. Day of the Dead has a cool premise. It just fails horribly as a movie. Execution, but yes, but the original Candyman is a ghost story, and it is a hell of a ghost story. So that is my pick. What is your pick? One I think I literally mentioned in the last tag, Devil's Backbone. <laughs> I uh, every, basically repeating everything I said there. It's my favorite Del Toro movie. I think it's him building the perfect atmosphere, his best atmosphere he ever did. I think it's a really interesting and unique story. I love everything about Devil's Backbone. Thing about the giant scissors, insert here, you know. There's nothing else I can say about Devil's Backbone that hasn't already been said. It's just a great flick. I get that. So what's our number three? I think favorite non-horror ghost movie. Who does the dark fate think he's talking to? <laughs> oh, fucking. We're all horror people. Okay, so non horror. So, who, what's yours? Paranorman. Yeah. It's a really, like, uh, weird coming from me. It's a really damn good kids' fi uh, film. It'd probably be up in my. It was one of my favorite kids' films. It's a, just a really interesting little flick that's more of a zombie movie, but it also is very supernatural and ghostly inclined, so I'm gonna say it counts. Yeah, I think it does. The, the animation is really cool, stop motion, like a style. It just works really well, and it's a, in my opinion, it's one of the best horror movies. No, no, it's one of the best horror movies for kids, and just one of the best kids movies that come out in decades. Yeah, it's a sweet little film. I need to show it to your brother. It's really good. I love it a lot. So ask me mine. What, what, wait a second. <laughs> Is it Field of Dreams? Oh, I love Field of Dreams! I love Kevin Costner! Sadly, I didn't think of it till just now. How come you didn't pick Field of Dreams? Because I hate Kevin Costner, and I don't like baseball movies, and I don't just give- I just flat out don't give a shit about baseball. Yeah, that would tech. but if anyone else wants to use that answer, because it might not come to you, like, um, automatically, but technically that's a ghost story. No, actually- Ghost Dad! Beep. Boop. Beep. Boop. I'm a ghost. The one Have this drink, little. <laughs> Sean didn't ask us what your favorite ghost movie, Rufy. Um, for those of you too oh, young to know, ghost. ghost Dad was a Bill Cosby picture. We might be doing it for a thing soon. I, I really want to do a video it's, on Ghost Dad. Strangely enough, it's more horrifying now than it ever was oh. back then. And it was directed by, by Mr. Mr. Tibbs. Tibbs. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, fucking hell, Ghost Dad. So what's your actual answer? My actual answer, I've got two because, uh, and one of them might count, because some people do consider this horror, but some people consider it a thriller, and you're going to give me so much shit, but I legitimately like this movie, and it's The Sixth Sense with Bruce Willis. I hope I haven't spoiled it for anyone who hasn't seen it. Spoilers. And then the other one, and you're going to give me shit for this one too. I had to pick two, Sean, because it's me and I always have to have at least one question where I pick two. Is um, Patrick Swayze's ghost. The Swayze. I, I, I act, I'm a girly girl. Like, Dirty Dancing is my favorite Patrick Swayze movie because it's me, so of course. But I actually have a soft spot in my heart for Ghost. And it's a sweet movie, you know, when I'm feeling girly and sappy. I like Ghost. Come at me, people. Come at me. <laughs> the Swayze. Shut up. You're stupid. <laughs> Okay, so what's question? What's number four? What's your favorite ghost in a ghost movie? All right, all right, all right. Okay, this is gonna show my total eightiesness, but when I when I heard Sean ask this question, I mean Dark Fate, and, and I I just ruined your secret identity, Sean. I'm so sorry. <laughs> when, when the Dark Fate asked this question, like my mind automatically went to this particular ghost. It's Slimer from the Ghostbusters. I love Slimer. If you'll notice, I have a Slimer cup I drink out of, and I'm not the biggest Ghostbusters fan, but even as a kid, I fucking loved Slimer. Like, they have this giant Slimer thing that I just want to carry and maybe put on my bed. <laughs> I like Slimer. <laughs> Don't judge. Yeah, I, I just have this weird image of you shooting up Ecto Cooler for some reason. I don't. Know I why. didn't like Ecto Cooler, and I made That's your weird. I made your grandmother so mad because they had Slimer slime, and I ruined an antique rug with it, and I never got slime again. <laughs> I made your grandmother so mad when I was a kid. So what about you? It's not Slimer, is it? No. What is it? I guess Beetlejuice. He's I, a ghost with the most, bib. Yeah, I guess Beetlejuice. I I couldn't really think of any super iconic iconic ghosts. I have some favorite like folklore based around ghosts, but movie wise, I couldn't think of anything. So yeah, I guess just Beetlejuice. You know, nice fucking model. <laughs> Michael Keaton's Hong Honk honk. I love it, the fact that that got a kid a kid show because that's the immediate scene I always think from that movie is him squeezing his dick and fucking saying nice fucking model. See, I always thought it was his balls he was squeezing. Cause Whatever, <laughs> some form of his ghostly genitalia. Because <laughs> you know, like a, a bicycle horn. It looks. Gen's reviews from the grave where we talk about does Beetlejuice have a dick? <laughs> well, I don't think it was his dick he was squeezing. I think. This is the stuff you subscribe for, people. Let us know in the comments. Is it his dick or is it his balls? Oh, God. I don't know why YouTube won't give us money. <laughs> I don't know why we're not eligible for that shit. Um, okay. Well, like I said, Sean will never tag us again. I say that in every video. It's true. Is this number four or five? Five. He okay. just said that. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay, so what's number however many this is? Ah, ah. Uh, Hong Kong. <laughs> I think you just need to insert that in our videos from now on. Great. Um, <laughs> no more work for you. Uh, okay, so. What's, your, what's the scariest scene in a ghost movie? Okay, this one might be a little controversial, but this scene, like, legitimately made, popped in my head. Technically, it's not a ghost movie, but the movie makes you kind of think and the character thinks it's a ghost, so does it count? I'd say that counts. It's Di Diablo Leak, not the remake, although the remake's not bad. I am talking about the original one, and I'm talking about the scene where the husband's in the bathtub and you think he's dead and then he rises of water and she like, ah! you know, that scene? I just, yeah. She thinks it's a ghost. She thinks it's a ghost. Yeah. She thinks he's coming back. I guess zombie with that cat. Yeah, I, I don't know. We're already this far and it counts. Yeah, so even though it's technically not a, but it's a scene that, like, that's, that, when I was a little kid, I was like, oh shit, he must be a ghost. Oh shit, she shouldn't have tried to kill him even though he was a bastard. So yeah, he's, yeah, that movie's really... Yeah, that's another one with lesbian undertones. Yeah, that's a lot of lesbian undertones in the Elvo League. What about you? Okay, well this will just be simple. 
Conjuring. The f- uh, granted, I'm not actually the biggest. Like, I think the first Conjuring is actually a pretty good film, but the rest of the series is. Ugh. Uh, but the first film is actually a really good suspenseful horror, uh, horror, uh, horror flick. All the uh, like stuff like the Changeling and the Haunting, and even Amityville do agree. Um, it's the bit for anyone who didn't get the scene where the mother is looking for one. I believe what she thinks one of her daughters is missing, and she looks in the pitch black fucking basement, and you just slowly like it's a minute scene, and you just slowly see like hands form behind her shoulder, and you just hear them fucking clap behind her, and it just completely works really well, and the scene just cuts from there, and you don't know what the hell happens to her, but you assume she gets possessed or something. Um, it works really well. I really it does. Know. It's it's a scene that immediately stands out that made me think, okay, there's something here with this movie. I get that. I get that. So, we are on to question six. six. Question number six. What is the spoopiest atmosphere in a haunting movie? Spoopiest? Spoopiest. Spoopiest? It's an old, like, Halloween. <laughs> mis- it's this famous in- misspelling Halloween decorations, like the dollar store. I get that. Um, Too spoopy. Um, this one might be cliche, but I always thought, like, whenever I think of atmosphere, especially in a horror movie, this one always does because um, it just comes to mind. It might be a cliche answer, but I, I think people get why I'm going to pick this one. It is The Shining because yeah. it has such a claustrophobic and oppressive, uh, oppressive atmosphere. Like, from the beginning, you get that score, and then you get your up in the mountains and you're you're kind of fucked you know you can't yeah yeah no the, the reason i always say the thing that really sells that movie and makes it work so well is that fucking score just com- immediately let you know this is gonna go weird yeah you kind of even before bad things happen and you know jack nicholson even when he's not going into like you know crazy jack torrance all work and no play makes jack a doll he's always feels like he's on the edge of killing someone yeah even and well if you've read the book you know he's a well even the movie points it out but the book really does he's a struggling alcoholic he has a lot of issues and he's basically trying to hold that bad part of himself he's trying to keep it down and in the book he ac- he accidentally breaks his son's arm in a drunken you know temper tantrum and you know he's he knows he's on probation yeah yeah and it's just a really good movie and a really and i just the atmosphere in that movie is very very just oppressive is the best yeah word it, I it, it, is, it works really well yeah what about you not to repeat myself but guys God damn it, I gotta say it again. The Haunting. It has such a great, bleak atmosphere. The, the <laughs> we literally just did this bit like 10 minutes ago. But, like, is it where Owen Wilson flop, belly flops on the bed? Or is it where Catherine Zeta-Jones is looking all sexy? Or is it the scene where the, the, the one character, it's about family, you monster! I won't let you take my children! You've clearly seen this movie more than I have. I, had a I only remembered the last one of those. I'm, I'm ashamed to say a friend of mine drugged me too. I've actually saw that in theaters because a friend of mine, and she wasn't even a horror person, but she wanted to see it. I think dude, she. Dude, I know a dude who nearly got in a fist fight over that goddamn remake. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, it, so, what scene is it? J- no, just the whole f- toe. F- so you're talking about the remake, right? Fuck you. <laughs> Just the whole atmosphere of the original haunting is just so, it captures the feel. It makes you feel like you're one of the patients being tested and that you're goddamn crazy. It Mm -hmm. works so damn well. It does. It does. It is a great movie and then the remake is awful. I will say that. Okay. Number seven. What's your favorite exorcism movie? Oh, that was easy. Um, this and this is a movie that doesn't get a lot of love, even with horror people. I, I hear a lot of people don't like this movie. Mm-hmm. It is the Last Exorcism. I like it. I like the Last Exorcism a lot too. I think it's really good. I know the ending kind of pisses. We're in the camp that actually really likes the ending to that movie. Yeah, I don't know. It, I mean, and it's a found footage movie, and you're yeah, not I don't like it. Well, very few because it's more of a mockumentary than a yeah, found right. footage movie. It's like how I like the Sacrament kind of. You know? Yeah, yeah, but it's just a good movie. I, I know people would you, the, the the exorcism is good you know the the exorcism is good but uh, like I, I, Sean brought it up and I'm sure other people are yeah, yeah. bringing it up so no the exorcist is a is probably the best possible answer he could give to this but, yeah you know but I but I don't think it, and I don't think the last exorcism gets enough love and there's something heartbreaking about it there is, I yeah. think with with really good horror yeah you've got to have the gore you've got to have all these other elements but I think the ones that really hit you where you live where there's like an emotion thing too and you mm-hmm. and the guy isn't a bad guy yeah, like yeah. he's 
conning people, but he's trying. He's doing it kind of for the good. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's he's. It, I like it. I just I identify with that movie a lot. What about you? Uh, I actually thought about doing one that's just called The Possession, not that one, but The one... Possession of Hannah Grace, is that the one you No, mean? there was one from like 2012. It's not the best, but it just has some kind of fun ideas of like a girl getting a box, ghosts inside, she gets possessed, she, oh, she possesses and the possession possesses her. But the, the thing I really like about the movie is the family's Jewish, so you have a rabbi dealing with a, a Catholic ghost, mm -hmm. which I thought was really fun. It's like if Amityville was truthful. It's, it's very true, and also that that's what the extra Exorcism, uh, it was a boy instead of a girl, and it was a Jewish family. Yeah. They converted yeah. afterwards, which I guess if that happened to your kid and, the, you know, the priest did what they did, you'd probably convert too. Probably. Yeah. But for my actual answer, I'm going to go with my favorite exorcism movie, Exorcist 3. Yes, the original film is more important and, sus and, Brad Dorf, and, and superior, but the I I would say The Exorcist 3 is a superior movie if only it was directed by the dude who did the original, And because yeah, that's the only problem with Exorcist 3. It feels like a 90s movie was the original feels timeless. It yes. does. What about The Heretic? <laughs> Man, that movie's bad. I rewatched that recently. That movie's bad shit fucking crazy, but damn it, shot pretty. There's some really good shots in that movie. Yeah, it's kind of like Robin Hood 2018, isn't it? <laughs> no, not at all. It's shot as pretty as Robin Hood 2018. But, no, I that's love... That's the prettiest movie that's ever been I, shot. I, I love Exorcist 3. There's so many, like, little things in it. I think Brad Dorff... As much as I love Linda Blair's performance in the original, and she was a great child actor, uh -huh. I love... I think Brad Dorff gives... I think it's probably his best performance, bar none. I think he's amazing in that movie. He's super creepy and, su and works really well. He's really good in it. There's a couple per uh, performances I enjoy just as much, but it definitely... It is probably one of his best. It's the one where he brings his manic, but he doesn't take it over the top manic, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, he's very serious. It's, it's, it's a, be, him being very serious. It's a heavy right role, now. and he does, he brings his manic energy, but he doesn't go over the top or, you know, and, and it's good. I'm not saying when he goes over the top, no one can do it better than Brad Dorf, but this is like a more subdued Brad Dorf with st a, ma a manic subdued Brad Dorf. Yeah, you know. very much so. Yeah, it so works really well. It really does. It's a great film. I love Exorcist. Three. It does. It's really good. So our last question. Favorite or, uh, spoopiest scene in a possession movie. Spoopiest scene. Spoopiest. 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 Okay. Well, for me, um, this is one we just watched this a couple of months back. It was playing on Shutter, oh. and um, it, I just I forgot. Like I, it, I had been a while since I'd seen this movie, and I was I just was sat there riveted. I was like, oh my god, I forgot how good this movie was. And that is We Are Still Here. Oh, I love We Are Still Here. J that that last what 15 minutes it's like the last 10 minutes and yeah you can't really go too much into it but it's a slow it, that's a slow like very plotted that you gives know. you a hell of a payoff yeah movie with barbara crampton and larry Fassenden. um the, then there's the ending of the movies like almost like evil dead levels of just like yeah. oh my god this is so gory and over the top it works so well you always i always wonder if, if they didn't get some ideas or inspiration from yeah yeah, yeah. it works really well it, it is it's a great movie and and, uh, it's on. Well, it was on. I don't know if it's I believe still, it still is on Shutter. Yeah, really great movie. Definitely, if you haven't checked it out, because it's it would been a while for me, and I, I just I got. It's one of those movies that just sucks you in. Every it's time. really good. It's we are still here. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. What about you? Okay, I just mentioned it. Exorcist three. The, it's a very slow, plodding scene about a night nurse doing the rounds around the insane asylum. You know, a couple little jump scares. The only problem with the scene is that merely there is a really... Jumpy the jump, jump scare ju cat. Jumpy the jump scare cat, as I've dubbed him, <laughs> makes a little cameo in the, mo in the scene, which is the only problem I have of it. But very slow, plodding scene. Nothing big happens. And you think, okay, she's fine. Nothing, is gonna, nothing wrong is going to happen. Calm. She's it's fine. fine. Everything's okay. Fucking hedge clippers come out of nowhere. It is amazing. That's a scene that sold that movie to me and why I say it's like an underrated masterpiece because it is the definition of an earned jump scare. Like, it works so well. The tension, you know something's coming and then they do something that makes you think, okay, that's what they were building up to and then they surprise you with no fucking hedge clippers. It's so great. I love it. It is. It's a great movie. And that was, it was eight questions, that right? That was the questions. So thank you so much, Dark Fate. You are like as awesome as your buddy Sean Patrick Erston. 
and I really like you, and I hope he'll be doing more tags, because I really enjoy this the Dark Fate. He just, he just is awesome. He's just really awesome. Sean needs to have you on the Horror Corner some more, because you're just really awesome, dude. And thank you so much for tagging us. We really appreciate it. I guess this is where we tag some people. I guess, even though they tag pretty much everyone in the community. Yeah, so, like, anyone who wants... Oh, uh, Rusting Willpower. Yeah. Rusting Willpower. We're tagging you, and we're tagging my sister from another Mr. Jenna over at the Horror of the Horror. Who else can I tag? Just switch. Cash your one. Um, if you if you haven't been tagged, we'd yes. love to hear your answers. Anyone who wants to play. If yeah. you have a channel and you haven't been tagged, we're tagging you. We're yeah. just a uh, blank check, people. A blank check. Um, so I always preferred milk money myself. <laughs> That was bad. I know. We're I'm... off the channel. We're never going to get tagged again because of you. Because I made a reference to milk money. Yeah, even Ed Harris doesn't bring that up. Any, just ignore the boy. Uh, anyone need a new co-host? <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you so much, Sean and Dark Fate, for tagging us because we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Anyone who wants to play, this is open to anyone. We tag three people, but if anyone else sees this and thinks it's fun, please feel free. And I think that's all we have to say about the Dark Fate's uh, ghostly tag. Thank you so much again, Sean. And um, I'm going to say what I always say. If you do happen to like the contents of this channel where we talk about Beetlejuice's dick and balls, Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you haven't hit that subscriber button, well, what the hell are you waiting for? Hit it! It's free! <laughs> I love free! Yeah! So please hit that, hit that subscriber button, people! Grab hit it. it! Grab it like Beetlejuice's <laughs> dick. <laughs> or balls. I'd say it's his balls, because Hong Kong, it just, the balls, it just makes your hand go Hong Kong. <laughs> it's way too much <laughs> Sean's never tagging us again. <laughs> um, yeah, but hit that subscriber button and we wish you guys a good day, a good evening, and hopefully YouTube will still have our channel up by tomorrow. We'll talk to you real soon, guys. Bye. <laughs>